some of my greatest lichen discoveries have just been when I've calmly <laughs> sat and it's almost as though they reveal themselves. Like, you just don't see them when you're walking by at, at pace. You just can't study lichens in a rush. You just gotta take your time and appreciate the small things in life. So right there, there's you know five or six species in that one little area, and, and when you're just flying by, you just you don't notice. A lichen is predominantly a fungus. It's a fungus living a particular lifestyle. They are working together with a photosynthesizing partner. So most of the time, it will be an algae. The algae lives inside, and that fungus builds almost like a greenhouse. And it's growing this algae inside, which is photosynthesizing and producing energy and sugars, right? And it's, it's feeding the fungus. It's known as one of the great symbioses of the world. It's, it's these multiple organisms working together. A crustose lichen. So fungus usually lives in wood, in soil. It's getting its energy from the thing that it lives in. And when it becomes lichenized, when it starts working with a photosynthesizing partner, there's a transformation. It looks completely different than it does when they're on their own. It can live on rocks, it can live on trees, it can live on soil, on cement, on just about anything in the terrestrial world. They don't have roots. Just about every botanical organism is, is extracting stuff from the soil. That's not the case. Like lichens are a really special organism that way. And that's what makes them so sensitive. Lichens are like canaries in the coal mine. Because they are eating the air, essentially, they're getting their nutrients and that directly from the rain and uh, from the air. If there's anything in the air, they'll, be, they'll feel it first. So lichens are very sensitive to air pollution. Here's one of the lichens that I was hoping to point out and find today. This is yellow map lichen. It's this greenish yellow. It's particularly common in more exposed spots like this. We're on the edge of the escarpment of these exposed rocks. It's also very common in the Arctic. The, the oldest lichen that we know of is this one. And it was aged at about 8,600 years old. A lot of animals eat lichen. The lichens use them for nesting material. Lichens use them for, uh, there's a lot of insects that have camouflaged to look like lichens. Countless ungulates have, have been seen eating lichens. The most famous case is caribou. They rely on lichens in the winter. Like that's their primary food source in the winter months. Getting dialed into lichens means you get your lichen eyes, as I call it. So lichen eyes means you start to notice them and they are everywhere. Once you realize that, you can start to appreciate the amount of biodiversity. Then you can also appreciate when you know how slowly they grow and how important they can be. To me, they're keys to understanding the natural world. They are important for helping to understand it and protect it and manage it. We've been really good at giving lots of attention to the charismatic species, trees and big charismatic megafauna. But I mean, all life has an intrinsic value and all life has important roles. And arguably the smaller things that are in the ecological world are the things that, that are the, the engines like driving the whole system and they're just as important. There's zero reason why we shouldn't give as much attention to the small things as we do the bigger things. They're still performing a function. And it's important for us to study lichens at this point because there is great change happening right now. And you can't acknowledge the change you know, without a baseline. We have these changing baselines of what species are where. Like, like there's a biodiversity crisis going on in the world right now. And there's an example right there. And 
without going out and studying them and, and learning and understanding these, these rare ecosystems and the species that rely on them, we may lose species that we never know. And who knows what kind of chemicals they could produce that could be used by humans for a cure for who knows what. But really it should just come down to the intrinsic value that they're a life form and all life forms have value.